It's a small world after all. 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 It's a okay, never mind. <laughs> well, welcome to the latest installment with Cat Dev. It's Thanksgiving week, and I decided to do my installment a couple days early because Friday is Black Friday and it's Thanksgiving week so I said I'm gonna do a Thanksgiving edition <laughs> which is basically early <laughs> so I do have my Disney hat on and as I said before Disney is 50 um, so they're celebrating their 50th anniversary I guess I guess I don't know if they're gonna do it just until December the end of December that's a good question I wonder if Disney's gonna do 50 years for the whole year until next October or are they going to just do it until the end of December because I definitely want to go back and get some more stuff that they have um ooh. so but today I'm gonna do oh my god today I'm going to do embedded systems I was gonna do like one device versus another device like a high-end device and then a, a low a low power device like a high power device and a low power device so i was thinking today i was like okay well how about the fighter jets um the f-22s um that's that's like a whole other topic to touch on like the military f-22 fighter jets and how they do all that um how they do all that like ordering and stuff and how they figure out like what are we gonna do for this year's jets or I guess for the next 10 years, I guess they do it like really like years in advance, they start making these jets. So I, was, I did my research because of, I wanted to work at, I don't know if it was General Dynamics or where did we go? Okay, so I'll tell the story. I'm gonna talk a little bit today, but maybe more than six minutes. I had went to um, Pittsburgh for uh Nesby I found out through a couple of other students that had gone the year before and they got jobs so <laughs> I was gonna go so National Society of Black Engineers um the kids before me that graduated the year before me um they went to Nesby conference and they met all these like recruiters and stuff and and at the end of the semester when they graduated they had a job they had a job before i'm pretty sure that um they had jobs before they graduated because i know that when school was over they were gone and they already had they already had jobs so so i followed their advice and i went to the nesby conference in pittsburgh um that was 2017 or 2018 that was 2018 I went and um, and I met I went to one of the dinners <clears throat> they had like a dinner which was oh my god the food was so good <laughs> the food was so good I went to a dinner I think it was I don't know if that was General Dynamics or I have to think of the name and I'll put it up I forgot the name of the company and I we met they were really nice like they were there they were there because they knew that people were students they were looking for jobs so they were open like they were talking to us and everything at the table and telling us like you know we we're talking about ourselves and like what we do and there was a girl there um there was a girl next to me she did she was a um a system administrator and then there was other i think the rest of the people in there in the group were students they weren't like working yet they were still in school and um so everybody was just talking about themselves and like what they were doing and like it wasn't it wasn't like um a big deal where you would say you know what i'm looking for a job because that that was the whole purpose it was the purpose of them like the president of the company was there like all the high-end people were there from california and their purpose was to meet with students and meet with people who wanted to find a job so it wasn't like you were asking like the wrong person or whatever so i went to nesby i did a lot i did a lot of networking i found out a lot of stuff um met a lot of people at the national society of black National Society of Black Engineers. Um, I think that's how you, I think that's what it's called, Nesby. So um, it was it was very good networking, very good networking. Um, the people that are there, like I said, they're there for a reason. They're there to help people find a job. So it's not like a big. Um, it's not like you're walking into an interview um, 
where, uh, how you say? It's not like you're walking into an interview where you're really like stressed out. It's not like that. It's everybody, they're there for a reason. They're there to support students. And um, they know that students are looking for a job. It's all entry level positions or whatever. It's not like, um, it's not like, it's not difficult. They're, it's there, they're there for a reason. They're there to recruit. So um, I had a great time. Oh my God, it was so much fun. Um, and like I did, I did a lot of networking. I went to a lot of the talks. Like I said before, this is not my first time talking about Nesby. I talked about this a long time ago. I talked about Nesby before. Um, and um, what did I say about Nesby before? Uh, oh, I said that Jack from Twitter, he goes there. He's a big supporter of Nesby. A lot of those people are supporters um, of National Society of Black Engineers. Um, who else? Or what else was I going to say? Um, it's a lot of, I, well, okay, okay. I was going to say that it's not just black engineers. It's, it's, um, it's everybody goes there. It's not just black people. <laughs> it's all, you know, all races go to Nesby. Um, and, um, and that's it. So when you, and then, oh, 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 and they had the career fair. Okay. Two things. So you, what you do is like, it's a whole thing. You have to get ready for it. Um, so like you get ready for it, like a long, like a few, I'm pretty sure the people that who participated in the conferences and stuff, they got ready for that, like, um, months before that. Cause some of the people they present, um, their research there. So like, if you want, if you do research, you present your research there and your research is around, um, the whole conference. So anybody that walks by, they'll see your research. And then I met a researcher and he got a job in Texas. So, I mean, but his, his skills were, you know, my skills aren't like that. Like he was like doing, I don't, I, he was on my, um, LinkedIn, but I, I took my, I took people off my LinkedIn. So he was on, he was like, um, I guess he did, I don't know if he designed water systems where he was like into the, like the whole water systems things and, um, building water systems and stuff like that. So like, so I, I think that's how I met him. So around the conference, there were people like students who who did their research and they presented and they put it on poster boards or whatever. So that, I think that's done in advance. Like I said, like, I can tell you the whole thing. So like stuff like that, when you're in school, you have a school, um, you have a school, like a, what do you call that? Like a FedEx, you know, how you go to FedEx and you have FedEx do your posters or whatever. Like my school, they do that. Like NSU, like my old school, they have a whole printing facility where you, if you need something done, you're a student, you just go there and you get it done. So if you need a poster board for your research, you need flyers or whatever, that's where you go and get it. So that's not, that's not a big deal. So, um, so that you could do that. And then two, they had a career fair. So the career fair though, early entrance was based on your GPA. So if your GPA was like a three point something, um, it's like a three point, whatever you got in there first. So the line to get into that, that was 2018, that was before the pandemic. The line was so, oh my God, the line. It was, I don't know how many people were there, but um, I guess with the Pittsburgh Convention Center, it was so many people there. I mean, like I said, it's not just black people going there. It was so many people like, and my GPA was not high because like I said, I had two jobs and um, if I had, if I had thought about it, I would have made my GPA my priority and make, because it, when you, especially if you're trying, if, especially if you're an engineer or you're trying to get in a, a tech job, your GPA does matter. Um, and that's how I found out my GPA did matter when I went to the conference and then I had to be in the back or a regular entry because my GPA was not high at all. My GPA was like a two something. It was a two point, was a three, I can't have three point oh. I'm not sure or whatever, or 2.5 or whatever. So your GPA does matter, like applying to companies like Facebook or whatever, and Google, it does, I don't care what they say. They be trying to say, um, you know what? We look for that all well around student. No, they want people who are um, going to make them money. And that's, that's it, at the, that's, at the end of the day, they're not gonna pick, um, unless you're like outstanding, um, unless you're, if you have a two point something, which you have to have something else too, because there's a lot of kids I'm sure that get into Harvard too, that have like two point, their grade, their GPA is not maybe not that high, but they do other stuff. Like they could play sports 
or they do something in the community like they have other they have, they do other stuff so it's not that their, their gpa is low so um, schools like that they do make it a priority to to get all kinds of students um in their programs so but i'm just saying for when you go to these like these tech conferences um they're looking for top people and they made an emphasis like um math and science um like your gpa had to be a certain a certain number so like i said all the kids that got um in early to talk to the recruiters and it mattered by the time i got to the recruiter he was i mean they were like I mean, it's one person like two people <laughs> you know and i had i had i had my top people that i wanted to go see i went to i know i wanted to do, do twitter my my second one was um I, I did Tesla. I did talk to Tesla recruiters. And then I talked to, um, what's the other one? I don't know if it's Snapchat. It's not Snapchat. Um, Instagram. Was it Instagram? It's one of those social media companies. I don't remember if Facebook was there. I'm not sure. But I know I my top companies were Tesla because they, because they do hardware. Oh, Qualcomm. Qualcomm is my top company. Qualcomm is my top company. Um, I, have to, I have to go back because... This is all before everything got out of hand. <laughs> Qualcomm is my, was my, is my top company that I wanted to work for. Um, so because they do hardware and I like, I like their company. So Qualcomm is my top company. And then I, I met with Tesla recruiters. I met with Twitter. Twitter's was, Twitter was nice. I ran, I got invited to Twitter. Well, not invited. You, well, you get in, they get like invites or whatever, or you go on Nesby and they post like they're going to have like um, meetings and you go to these meetings and you meet with, you know, like their their recruiting team and you talk to them about like what you want to do and and things like that. So Twitter, the Twitter's the Twitter one was the best one. But Twitter and Google, Google had two parties, parties at the same time. So I think I went to one and then I ran down to the other one because I wanted to make sure like who wouldn't run to Google, Google's um <laughs> party so but the twitter one i know the twitter one was better or google was better i like twitter it depends on your i say a lot in my it's packed <laughs> it depends on it depends on who you want to work at it depends on it depends on what tech, technology they're using what language they're using is it is it the company for you and like twitter was like more of a company for me i felt that google i, I felt that i wasn't i couldn't handle handle the um like um, I was gonna say the workload, because they they really do work. Like it's not like um nine to five. Not that any job is. I'm just saying, they like they don't go home. So, um, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to do Google at the time, but now I mean, it's a different story now. So, but so the Nesby conference, the line was so long. The, your GPA mattered so much. Um, it was a huge emphasis on your GPA. I guess because they want to know. Do you take the time out study? Do you take the time out to do your work? And is it and is your work important to you? So I mean, my GPA I, I regretted that too. Like my GPA was low. Um, it wasn't low. It was, my GPA is fine. But I'm saying for for the Nesby conference, my GPA was not good. So um, like I said, the line I'm telling you that line was so my feet hurt like at the end, and it was cold too. It was like winter, so it was like it was spring break, or maybe it wasn't spring break. I'm not sure, but. So the line, like I said, the line is Nesby is not just African American, but even though it mainly is for Black students from, you know, HBCUs and things like that to go and network, and like th these are the kids that are, it's an engineering conference, so it's these are the kids that are um, uh, going to be engineers, any kind of engineer you're talking about, um, chemists, like Honeywell companies like that. I, I noticed that people were not going to the um, military. The lines were so long for everything else, like Qualcomm, the line was long. But for like the military, nobody wanted, nobody was there, which I was kind of shocked because they pay for everything. I don't know, I was kind of shocked that, that nobody, I mean, I'm too old, so I wouldn't go, I can't go in the army. But <laughs> the military line was the only line that was just, nobody was in line. But they do have, they have like the airlines there. Um, and things like that. So let's not talk about Nesby. So anyway, I, I learned a lot from Nesby. 
um, which carried me to today. Like it, that's what's carrying me as far as like help me like looking for a job, um, like just knowing how to look for a job. You know, I did my research before I went and then I met people there. Um, let me try to get my Disney hat. I met a lot of people there and I met, talked to recruiters and then that helped me. It opened, it opened up like, um, not doors, but it opened my eyes to different things. Like, okay, you know what? Maybe software engineering, even if I, I could do software engineering, but I don't necessarily have to work for a tech company. I could do it anywhere. I could work for healthcare. You know what I'm saying? I could do anything I want. So, and at the time I was doing my, um, I don't know if I had, oh, if I had done my security internship then. Um, did I do my internship before? Oh no, I was working. I had a full-time job, but I think I had told them that I was, um, before I started, that I was going to this conference. So that year was big for me. I know that year I went to, that year I went, I don't know why I did that. I think I had went to spring break, no, but that was the year before. I know I had gone to that summer. I went to uh, Creation, and and um, <clears throat> I started going to Creation because of Family Force Five. So because Family Force Five was there, I went to Creation, and that. God, creation, forget it. I haven't been there in a long I haven't been there since then, since 2000. I think that was 2018. The last time I went to creation, but that is the most amazing thing that I've ever done in my life is go to creation. I was already baptized, so I didn't need to get baptized, but creation, thank you, Family Force Five. And I forgot I gotta get back with my Family Force Five family. So um embedded systems. So I'm gonna talk about embedded systems today. <laughs> got off track because I love talking about technology. I love talking about engineering and stuff like that. So um, embedded systems. Let me get my notes. I have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> embedded systems. Basically, it's just a processor, memory, and an IO um, input output peripheral device. So I was looking at that. I was like, okay, embedded systems. How much memory do you need for the embedded system. So an embedded system basically is a system like, for example, I was doing my research. I was like, okay, an embedded system will be in your refrigerator, like a Samsung. Like the Samsung, Samsung is so up, date, up to date. Like um, anything that's embedded into a, anything, anything that's embedded into a device or like, like Tesla has it embedded into cars, those, um, I don't know what you call them. Do they call it computers? <laughs> computer the, the mainframe panel is like a computer embedded device so like the samsung refrigerator it tells you like when you're out of something um like the you know it has a screen on there that tells you what's in the refrigerator or whatever you like, like the, com the com panel that's on the front of the samsung refrigerator embedded device basically iot internet of things that's basically an embedded device so I was like, okay, well, I'll do my F-22 um, fighter jets. Cause I know they use radar and I was reading how um, they wanna go undetected, right? So I was like, okay, if they wanna go undetected um, and they're saying that um, somehow they've caught up to their technology where they before they were undetected, now they can spot maybe something, maybe they're spotting, um, I don't know, maybe like one piece of the plane somehow, or there's maybe something, maybe there's like a signal or something that's letting them know that there is an F-22 in my airspace. I'm gonna use another company, another country. Okay, so they're in my airspace. So how are they figuring out that this, you know, F-22 is in, this thing is so, okay. How are they figuring out that this F-22 is in, airspace that's a question i really don't know i don't have to do research on that um so embedded systems um i was going to do my f-22 and then i'm versus the iot device so my iot device my example was the refrigerator iot is in everything now i mean nowadays everybody has a camera 
outside their door, internet of things. Everybody has, um, like I said, a camera. People have these smart refrigerator, any kind of smart device in your home. Um, what's a device that tells you? Oh, Alexa. Okay, Alexa's a smart device. I'm, part, I'm sure, pretty sure that they set off everything for smart devices, the Alexa. Um, and I had one, I don't know what I did with it. Um, you could connect your Alexa to your phone and connect Netflix or something to your, to the, to Alexa. <laughs> and I guess, you know, everybody does that, you know, Alexa, blah, 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 whatever. That's an IOT device. So I named three things that were an IOT device. The refrigerator, the Alexa, the camera that, I don't know what the camera's called. I forgot what it's called, but the camera's at everybody's door. <laughs> When I go to work, whatever that camera's called, um, that's an IoT device. Any kind of smart device in your home is Internet of Things. So, embedded device. How do you design an embedded device? So, well, basically, when you, this is what I was taught in school. When you try to design software, um, you have to, first of all, you have to go around and figure out what device does your customer want? So your customer, um, it could be your customer could be in-house or your customer could be out outside of the company. Um, whoever your customer is, what do they want exactly for their device? How do they want their software designed? You have to go through so many steps to figure out what do they want for their design. Okay, how do I do that? I use all kinds of um, I use I use my project management tools in the beginning to find out how and what my customer wants. So like I was looking up because my I graduated in 2014, and I'm pretty sure that things have changed. I my grad my degree was in IT, so like um, we use the Gantt chart, and the Gantt chart tells you you build out in days like you know 60 days, you know 360 days your project. You build it out. What part are you working on this week? This part we're working on next month. And you go through your Gantt chart. That's what I was taught in the school. So you do your Gantt chart. Um, um, also, like when I before I graduated, um, my senior project, I had to do, I talk so much. I, I like to ramble. My senior project, I had to do, um, we had to, to build a website if we had to build a website for my senior project. So for my senior project, I did, okay, two things. For my senior project, I did um, a website. I did the database. And what else did I do? Oh, and I did the design, like the graphic design. It nearly killed me. It took me, it took me 30 days. It took me 30 days to do it. I think from the beginning, I think the classes how long is a semester or whatever? It took me, if I hadn't, I, I, like I had a good teacher who, she kept up with us and was like, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. So it took me, I guess it took four weeks at all, I don't know, 30 days, whatever, for the semester to do my project. So like now I, I have that experience where I can build a web, I can build a web, well, back then you, you were using, I was using Adobe, so you don't do that now. I guess people use JavaScript. This is before JavaScript. I didn't even think they used JavaScript. Well, JavaScript is more, in demand now. This is before boot camps, or what was was it? Maybe no, no, not before boot camps. This is okay. No, so I was gonna do a boot camp. I said no, I'm not gonna do a boot camp. I'm gonna go and get my degree because I felt like I, I, for me, you gonna do a boot camp? Go ahead and do it. But for me, I felt like I wanted to get um, my bachelor's degree, so I did a bachelor's degree in IT. So okay, so my senior project. I had to build the website and I and you had to build a database, which I did. So when you're building when you're doing your software, you're building your database or whatever, um, all the day all the DB people um using, you know, whatever tools you want to use for your database. There's so many now. Like in my school we learn with SQL, with SQL. So I I can do SQL. It to me it's easy. Um and Visio, I can do that. That's not a it's not a not a big deal, but like if, if I'm getting into like a big system, like where they do like um, thousands of lines of code, then no, that's a little bit out of my reach. But I did my own little database where I had my t-shirts, <laughs> you know, I did, I did a clothing company and um, that's, I did that online. So I, mean, I did an online clothing company, right? 
So I built my database and I built my website using Adobe and I did the graphic design for it. So that was my senior project, senior project. And I think, I don't know where I was working at then, but whatever. So um, you, you, you do your design, you do your database or whatever. And um, what else do you do for your embedded software? And then you do your coding. So, but this for embedded, I was thinking like for the F-22 jet, I'm pretty sure that they use, um, well, they were saying on here that they use MS-DOS. I, I don't know. So um, I don't know what language they use um, to build an embedded system for the F-22. I'm pretty sure that they use a lot of hardware um, versus software because you don't want something like that to be connected to, you don't want something like that to be so much connected to the internet. Um, you want it to be um, sort of offline. I guess what, that's what I guess that's what they were saying about the radar. Why are they? How are they detecting? How are they detecting these F twenty two jets if they're supposed to be undetectable? They're supposed to be stealth fighters. So how are they detecting them? Now, are they detecting them because there's a signal? Is there something? Is there like a piece of? Is there like a piece of plastic or whatever? Maybe there's something that, like when you send send things to. Um, when you send things to be um, built, like when you use like your spreadsheets or whatever, okay, you know what? I send over my specs to the company to build me this machine, whatever, to build me this fighter jet, like I said before. Well, you know what? Maybe they didn't have the exact material that you wanted. Maybe there's some kind of material in there that um, that they're detecting that is not the material that um, that the that you know that I guess the United States government or whatever ordered. I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm gonna do that maybe. I'll probably forget, but because um, <laughs> I got so many other things to do. Um, how are they? How are they detecting? How are they detecting the radar? I think to me, I'm thinking. Well, maybe it's a piece of plastic or something. Something that's not because they because they were saying now they got this ceramic. Like when you go to Walmart and you see all that like ceramic um, coated stuff, they're doing ceramic um, covering the plane. That's interesting. It's so interesting, but I'll ramble. So embedded systems, like I said, could be like a Tesla. What's ever embedded in Tesla cars, um, the F-22 fighter jet, the lady that was, I was watching a video on YouTube with the lady who was um, showing each control panel of the embedded system of the control panel on the jet and she showed the button where you eject yourself i was like couldn't that be made into software but i guess probably not because it's something that she has to do at, at the last minute she can't be hitting a you know display panel boop, 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 you know looking for a button to eject her out of the plane so um i think that's it let's see Let's see, embedded systems, designs, eject. Oh, your network diagram. That's too what I learned in school too, network diagram. So like um, all your networking, everything that's connected um, through the network, you do your network diagram too. So um, that's what we did in um, my undergraduate. So. Um, you do your, like we had to do a network diagram. We had to we had to do a Gantt chart. That was I'm telling you that was like <laughs> probably probably too because I was I was older when I went back. I was um, you know like I said I had a full time job. If I was like, if I was a younger person and I was in school like the first time, it probably wouldn't have been a big deal because you got all day. But when you had a job and I'm telling you, this lady, this little lady in my class, <laughs> she had, I don't know how she did, <laughs> she had like five kids. And I was just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm so glad that I'm not trying to be funny or anything, but there's no way that I could have went through school if I had kids. And I'm not, I'm not like saying anything to like attract people or whatever. I'm just talking. If I had went to school and I had kids at home, there's no way. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it. That's why I said, let me do this now. <laughs> because in case I ever did, I want to make sure that I do the things that I like to do and get them out of the way before I 
ever did have children. That's why, that's, that's my model. I do the things that I like to do. Um, I like to do the things that I like to do that make me happy. Um, so that's one of the reasons probably why I don't have kids because I feel like I wouldn't be able to do things. I, I wouldn't be able to do certain things because I, you can't, if you have children, you cannot do everything that you want to do. And that's why I felt like I like to do the things that I want to do before I ever, I mean, I don't, I'm not having, I don't have children. So what, it, I like it probably never will, but that's okay. But I'm just saying, to me, I felt like I, I, my goal has been, let me, I'll do everything that I like to do. <clears throat> I don't want to have children because I don't want to, I don't want to miss out on anything and regret something that I miss out on because I, because I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny or anything or make kids feel bad because I'm sure, whatever, but I'm just saying. I wanted to do things before I ever had children because I wanted to get stuff out of the way where I, where I would never feel like I missed out on something or I didn't do something. So that's been something that has carried me. Like I wanted to, if I want to do something, I say, you know what? I, <clears throat> let me do that while I'm young. It's not, it's not even like I, like I've done a lot, you know, I haven't done a lot. It's not like I did like went to space or something. I'm just saying for me, I was like, I don't want to look back and ever regret anything that something that I didn't do. I never, I, that's my one model. I don't ever want to look back and say, I didn't do something. Um, I, I regret that. I, I regret not having done that. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't have children because I, I wanted to do certain things in my own way and in my own time where I didn't make children a priority. It, it, it wasn't a priority for me. Um, because I felt like I wanted to do other stuff. <clears throat> I will go on and on. I was doing embedded. So, <laughs> but I'm going to put up, um, like all the things you, the steps you do to create an embedded software design and then, um, and what embedded systems are. I'll put the links up like, um, uh, for the F-22 fighter jets <clears throat> and then for the IOT devices, um, I'll put a link up for that. What is a smart device? Um, and then the IOT stuff too, which to me, I don't know. I was like, well, why would I do that? But I guess it's like a degree in IT. Like, I don't even know if they do that anymore. Is it worth it to get a bachelor's in IT? To me, it is. <clears throat> Cause I'm so glad that I did it. But like, like I said, like FIU, FIU has that new bachelor's degree in IOT devices. I mean, I to me, I don't want to be pigeonholed with my bachelor's degree saying bachelor's degree of IoT. But if everything is a smart device in the home and your resume says bachelor's degree in IoT, who are they going to call first? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, look at some kid who has or or person. Because FIU, whenever I went to any FIU event, there's people of all ages there. There's older people, there's younger people. So there's not just... Um, there's not just kids at the computer science building. Um, there's all kinds of ages there. So um, <clears throat> FIU has the bachelor's degree in IOT. So versus the kid who has bachelor's degree in computer science. Well, I have this kid here who probably has he or she has practical experience. I'm sure if they have a bachelor's degree in IOT devices, they've built something. They probably, they had to graduate with building some kind of device. Just like before I graduated my bachelor's degree in IT, I had to prove, I had to prove that I earned the bachelor's degree. Like I said, I had to build a website. <clears throat> I had to build a database, which nearly killed me. And I had to do the graphic design. Maybe I didn't have to do it, but I mean, I could have asked somebody to do it, but to me, like I've seen people do that, like they ask other people to do their work. I couldn't do it. Like I, I wouldn't, couldn't ask anybody to do my homework for me because I felt like I, I wouldn't learn anything. <clears throat> like I had that artificial intelligence class. I, honestly, I probably could have asked somebody to do the homework for me so I could graduate and get out faster. But I was like, you know what? No. Because if I go on a job and they say, well, Katrina had on her, um, her, um, transcript says artificial intelligence 
not that not that they're gonna call me for that because they're gonna call machine learning people whatever so that's it so <clears throat> my degree that artificial intelligence class i was look, look, look at my professor every day like what are you talking about like like i that class let me tell you i that whole summer and two i got doing my start doing my leak code stuff um that whole summer i had oh okay i tell the story so i had um i told the story like so many times <laughs> i got a job at blue cross blue shield and i was working at customer service that's my hand so their customer service is seasonal like you only work um i, I think you only work seven months and then you have the summer off so i said what <laughs> They give you the option. They ask you, um, do you want to take the summer off? I said, oh yeah, of course I do want to take the summer off. You, I mean, you don't make, you don't, you, you get less money year round. Like other people on the floor, they get paid more, but you make less because you're going to take off in the summertime. I was like, what? Take off in the summertime? Of course I will. I'll take off in the summertime. Yes. So I took off in the summertime and then I got a job at Macy's <clears throat> and worked Macy's in the summertime at night. And then I was free at home during the day. And during the day, <laughs> That summer, that summer, um, I did all kinds of like, I did MIT videos on artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, I did that like every day. And like machine learning, I get it. Like I, I get it, machine learning. Because I had that artificial intelligence class, it was a lot easier. But honestly, I didn't know what that guy was talking about. It was, the class was hard. That was the hardest class I ever had at Nova Southeastern was the artificial intelligence class. I couldn't, I just couldn't, I, I got what he, I got the concept, but I couldn't like, I just, I, I almost failed the class, so I dropped it. So, um, but like I said, I was, that summer I worked, I didn't have, I, I was still getting paid from my regular job, but I, um, it's seasonal. So they let you, they let you go on the summertime because they don't need people. <clears throat> They don't need people, so they keep their strongest people who like to work during their year, and it gets slow in the summertime, so they let people go because I guess it's, maybe it's hard for them to keep people. I don't know, whatever. So I, I love that um, we were seasonal. And when it was time for me to go, I was like, yes, <laughs> it was the best feeling in the world. Oh my god, I had the entire summer to myself, and believe me, I had so much fun. I worked at Macy's, like <laughs> Macy's at night. I worked in the in the, in the jeans department, in the women's jeans department. <laughs> like what am I doing <laughs> I love going there I was like oh my god jeans I be selling my jeans or whatever but um I love working at Macy's I love that store <laughs> of Macy's and JCPenney's I love the mall so if the mall's hiring <laughs> I can't do that now because I don't have I, I can't work at the mall now but <laughs> I do love working at Macy's I love working at the mall it was oh my god I had so much fun that summer they did like I'm talking so much because <laughs> I'm so excited for Thanksgiving they had like um they had a fashion show that summer they had um what else i don't know i worked in every department at macy's and macy's and aventura mall that's like the number two mall in the country <clears throat> excuse me number two mall in florida or the number one mall in florida so you get everybody you know from everywhere i hadn't worked there for tourist season but um like i worked in the men's department i worked in i worked in the men's department I worked like we're dockers and stuff. <laughs> I worked in like that area. I love working over there. I worked in like the regular men's part where you have, um, <clears throat> I worked in the men's department where you have, um, oh, like just casual clothes. And then you can't, you can't work in the, 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 the career department, like where they sell like suits and stuff. You can't work there. That's for people who are, who sell high-end clothing and they know their job those are those are regular stable people you can't just like go working over in the men's <clears throat> where they where they sell suits and things like that i worked in the home department i was like oh my god it was so much fun working in the home department because people would come in and like <clears throat> like buy all kinds of stuff like i'm like what but like things you wouldn't think of like but like people would be buying stuff for, for college or whatever, <clears throat> going away. I, I, I was there in the summertime, so um, I worked there then. I worked um, worked in men's. I worked in the home, which the home store is like the home store is, is an entire it's an entire Macy's, just one home store. That store it's like amazing to me how and I, <clears throat> that too that too like 
that's why I like working at Macy's because I learned like the business side of Macy's. The business side of Macy's is very interesting. Like they really not just not just the tech side of Macy's, which I which I wouldn't mind working there. It's in Atlanta, <clears throat> but I'm not, I don't I don't know if I want I would, I don't know if I want to live in Atlanta um, because I because it's different. It's not you know what I'm saying. It's not um, it's not as warm as here. But the Macy's tech department is. They were in Silicon Valley, but now they're in Atlanta. So um, I think that may be why, maybe, I don't know if they can, I don't know. I don't know whatever. I don't know why Silicon Valley didn't work <clears throat> for Macy's. I guess people, I guess Silicon Valley, maybe like they didn't want to work at Macy's, whatever, but whatever. I don't know. I have no idea. So I worked at Macy's. I learned the business. I learned sales, like how to do sales. That's why now I love sales. Before, um, before I didn't understand sales really until I started working at Macy's and then I understand like okay these are my sales how do I sell like how do I actually sell products and things like that that's why I love I love I love working at Macy's I do I love working on the floor and the president of Macy's came when I was there that day if I had known that he was coming <clears throat> that day I would have made sure that I saw the president of Macy's he came that day to the mall so like I said I learned the business side of Macy's um like for all people, all, for all the people that are doing their masters in business, like getting the MBA, it's such a good. Um, I guess I could, I guess if they do internships, I don't know. I don't know where their offices. I guess their offices are in Ohio. Um, but Macy's is a. I guess they're considered. <clears throat> they're not considered tech savvy, but Macy's is really tech savvy. Um, they're tech savvy, but I guess when I call customer service, though, it wasn't. It wasn't it wasn't as good as I thought because I because I, I know that Macy's was in Silicon Valley, so I assumed that they were more up to date. But I guess that that's what that's why they did open a Silicon Valley office because they were trying to figure out how to really be out there tech savvy, just like Walmart. <clears throat> Walmart is is the most tech savvy company because they do all that. How else do they attract all these people to be the number one company? I will I will just go on and on and on. Walmart's like Walmart is the number one company in the world. I'm sure besides any company in China or any any company in India, Walmart's number one. And Walmart's everywhere. I talk so much today. I'm so excited for um <laughs> for Thanksgiving. But <clears throat> I do I just like to talk. So um Walmart and Macy's, those are my two companies that were on my list. Like I like I said, I had Tesla was one. Um Twitter was Qualcomm is my number one company. <clears throat> Qualcomm is my number one company that I want to work for because they do hardware. And my goal is to get into hardware. So that's why Qualcomm is my number one company um, to learn um, and do hardware. And then my number two company was Twitter. <clears throat> my number three company was Tesla. Um, and my number four and five company was Walmart and Macy's. Um, but I don't know if I want to do the Macy's because they moved to Atlanta. When Macy's was in Silicon Valley, I preferred to do that one. And then Walmart, I'm pretty sure Walmart is still out in Silicon Valley. So embedded systems, that's over. Okay, I did that. So my installment is over today and I will put the links up for embedded systems um, and how to do, um, <clears throat> how to design software. Basically I'll put up the instructions like how you design software, that's what I'll do. Okay, thank you, Cat Dev out. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, what should I do about Thanksgiving? Um, it's Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving is Thursday. Um, I'm doing a vegan Thanksgiving like I did last time. <clears throat> and the last time I did a vegan Thanksgiving, um, my niece, we did I, did, I did vegan Thanksgiving with my niece. And I'm gonna do vegan Thanksgiving again with my niece again. I'm so excited because I can't believe it that we're gonna do it two times. This is the Boca Miami crew is back again. I, I said that, I said that the Boca Miami crew was gonna be back and it happened. <laughs> the Boca Miami crew will ride again. And we did. The Boca Miami crew was so I oh my god, I talked so much today, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you about the Boca Miami crew. My niece went to FAU. It was so much fun. Um I would go visit her on campus and I'm telling you, okay, never mind, but whatever. <clears throat> the Book of Miami crew will ride again. We're gonna have vegan Thanksgiving, and my niece is gonna come here, 
and we'll do our vegan food and then Thanksgiving will be fun and then Black Friday is Friday. Okay, well thank you and Cat Dev out. Bye.